from my make this week started as a doodle that I just got totally lost in. Now I was doodling because my youngest daughter showed me a really smart trick on the Procreate app on iPad and that is using the symmetry setting on drawing assist. We'll get to that soon. And fairly quickly, my doodle evolved into this kind of octopus aquatic themed um, illustration. And of course, then I was really into it. So I thought, what can I do with this design? Well, I thought, let's try a lino and let's maybe use the design to give my skateboard a makeover. But I had a problem, of course, the Design is really intricate, so I then got a chance to use a transfer technique that I really love doing using gel medium and old label backing paper. Now the transfer technique, both onto lino, ready for lino cut, and for the skateboard makeover are in separate videos on my channel, check them out. We're gonna use this video, hopefully to inspire you to try using Procreate for yourself to explore this symmetry assist. So for my octopus design, I've used the Procreate app on the iPad. If you haven't tried it, do so. Best tenny you'll ever spend. It's a great investment, powerful, really versatile for all sorts of image making. Right, let's get started. Quick heads up, when you create a new document, click on the plus, in the folder and check the DPI is at least 300 okay this because you never quite know what you want to do with an image that you make and if you want to blow it up quite big you're going to need at least 300 DPI okay let's get started up in the top right if you've never used procreate before is your layers palette okay I am going to set my background colour to quite dark and then go back into my layers palette and I've created an empty layer there and that's the one I'm going to draw in. You get an amazing range of tools and just like in Photoshop you can import brushes so forth, even create your own. So I've chosen a gel pen because I want a nice clean graphic line. Okay, let's move to the top left. There's a little spanner icon. Now I'm going to click on that, select canvas, then enable drawing guide, click edit drawing guide. I get this screen down on the bottom right. I've got this button called symmetry underneath it options. Now you get this fantastic selection here, vertical, horizontal, quadrant and radial, which give you loads of design options because they all mirror what you're drawing. You'll see in a second. Now I've chosen vertical which will give me a vertical axis on which to mirror my drawing. Now, a quick heads up, I'm on a black background, so I'm gonna to have to increase the thickness and opacity of my guideline. Click done on the top right, and we're good to go. So I've selected my pen tool, gone to my color picker, got myself a nice white or light color that's gonna show up against my black. Got my Sliders on the left for size and opacity on the bottom and off I go. So I'm going to start drawing on the left and of course it's self-explanatory, right? Whatever you're drawing is getting mirrored along across my vertical axis. Now to start your doodle, here's what I suggest. Cross that axis line and start to get some base shapes developed. I've just done a couple of curves there that have turned into this and I'm already starting to see possibilities. I'm thinking maybe sea turtle or like a trilobite. So I'm gonna put some flippers or kind of like horn shapes on the, on the outside. I'm gonna repeat those. At the moment, I'm just looking for kind of like pleasing overall shapes, all right, that are good on the eye. Once I've established those, I can then start building textures, pattern, etc. And my doodle can get ever more involved. 
So here I've made a little mistake I want to correct. So I could, of course, change the color of the pen, um, but I'm going to use the rubber instead. I'm doing this just in case I want to change the color of the background in the future. So I remain with a white drawing over a plain colored background. So a bit more tidying up with the rubber there. I didn't mention before, but I've got my rubber set to the same tool, the gel pen that I've been using to draw with. Uh, obviously this gets a nice consistent texture and edge to your lines. Uh, so let's see uh, another quick tip here. You know, if I want to kind of adjust the weight of line or maybe kind of taper lines, I can paint them in a little thicker. And of course, if you need to shave or modify the shape of that line, you can then just go back in with the rubber, as I said before, set to the same tool or the same type of pen, the gel pen in this case, and I can just shave as I'm doing there a bit off the line. Right, let's have a quick look at block filling. So if I click on my color picker in the top right and drag across, I can just drop color into what we call fenced areas. Yeah, it needs to be quite a nice, clearly outlined or fenced area, otherwise it's gonna kind of overfill, um, but very quick. And that again works with your mirrored symmetry assisted drawing guide that you've got set to this layer. So useful for quickly building tone and filling areas with which to then build pattern texture on top of. Okay, let's look at selecting and isolating areas. Up on the top left, you have this like squiggly S. That brings up this menu down the bottom. If you go for the left option, automatic, and then just click again, it needs to be quite a clearly fenced area. And I've clicked in two areas symmetrically across um, my design and now I'm drawing into those with the brush. Now you can't see what I'm doing here because obviously you can't see my hand, but I'm swiping right across this shape and that's giving me a nice straight line. And because it's a selected and isolated area, I don't have to worry about going over the edges. Um, really, really useful to be able to select and isolate areas in this way. Let's do another couple of areas just so you see that again, click on the S, I'm going to deselect and re-select it again. And again, go for automatic, click in those areas I want. And on I go with my pen tool and swiping across that shape to get that kind of hatched fill. So for me, you can start really having some fun. You can zoom in. You can either be drawing with the rubber into your block field areas or with your pen and you just start exploring detail, pattern and texture, adding shape. Before you know it, you've lost an hour of your life and you've ended up with something probably really interesting. Of course, the beauty of digital drawing as well, it's so easy to undo and edit any of what you've done. That's a really big advantage over working directly onto paper. You know, I get it, the purists out there are gonna tell me, well, you don't have the feel of the paper, you know, it's not as kind of sensory, but come on, and there's a place for it. I'm sure you'd agree. I'm gonna have one last look at this select function. So again, automatic, I'm gonna click in that central area and just to explore and play around with some of these other brushes. So highlighted in blue there is the area I'm gonna be working on. I'm gonna go into my um, brush palette and see what other options I've got for creating some texture. So let's have a look at um, the elements one, kind of down near the, the bottom of the list. Let's go with water, as already I seem to be working with like an aquatic watery theme. And gonna drop the size a bit, drop the opacity a bit. And the beauty of this, a textured brush, again will mirror because of that assisted drawing. And you get these kind of lovely patterns that you can work with and develop more interest in your design.
Okay, here's the part of the process that I really enjoyed. So once you've built some basic shapes just to work into, zooming in with your two finger pinch into a small detail and then adding intricate patterns, textures, design ideas. And then you kind of have a bit of a reveal where because you've still got the assisted drawing guide on, when you zoom out, you see the kind of results of your doodles. Now, I found that yielded some really interesting results where I just let my mind wander into repeat shapes, patterns, etc. One last tip I want to share with you. Let's say you don't want to draw symmetrically for a part of your drawing. Go into the layers palette, click on the little thumbnail image, open up the menu and uncheck drawing assist. This will then allow you to draw on any part of your image without mirroring. So I'll add a little detail to this sort of left flipper shape and you'll see that when I zoom back out, it won't have mirrored. You can then go back into your layers palette, enable the drawing assist again by clicking on the thumbnail, checking drawing assist and away you go to continue with your symmetrical details, features, etc. Okay, there you go, some digital doodling. A great way to spend an hour. Lovely and simple, only one layer in Procreate. Loads of fun and a very mindful drawing activity. Okay, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, feel inspired to try some things. Remember, there's videos linked below for how I use this image to transfer onto Lino for a Lino cut print and to decorate my skateboard during a makeover. Okay, bye for now. Hope you enjoyed it. More videos on Yates Makes coming soon. Take it easy.